Greetings and welcome to another program of the Mark by Mark A. Foster Show, or something like that. I want to begin this program by telling you a joke. Now, does this joke have anything to do with Marxism, Third Worldism, or Maoism, Third Worldism? Absolutely not. But hey, who cares? I want to tell you the joke anyway. Now, I should qualify. I did not make up this joke. This joke was told to me about 50 years ago. Yeah, I'm an old man. This joke was told to me about 50 years ago when I was about 17 years old by my friend Rob. And no, I won't mention his last name in case he comes back and sees this and accuses me of stealing his material. Uh, I don't, actually, I don't think he made the joke up either. But it's a funny joke, and so I'll tell you, and then we'll go into uh, what we'll talk about today on the appropriate subject. Okay, now when Rob told me this joke, this, kind, this joke was funny on the face of it. The idea was that the Pope was going to resign, and um, nobody ever imagined that the Pope would resign back then. That, that, that in and of itself was a humorous notion until Pope Benedict came along and actually did it. And that's why we have Pope Francis, because Pope Benedict resigned. You know, just died, I think, within the last year, I believe. And amazingly, uh, Pope Francis and Pope Benedict became relatively good friends. And I think that was all because of Pope Francis's desire to sort of try to create a new warm spirit in Vatican City. Now, I am not Roman Catholic. I am not Roman Catholic, but I like Roman Catholicism. I respect Roman Catholicism. I've had a lot of friends who are Roman Catholic. Many of my best friends, in fact, literally my best friend right now, was born Roman Catholic. And my previous best friend was also born Roman Catholic. The guy who told me this, who was not one of my best friends, but is a friend or was a friend, is also Roman Catholic as well. So, uh, gee, that was redundant. Also Roman Catholic as well. Why did I say that? I don't know. But he's the one who told me this joke. So I will tell it to you and you can make up your own minds on whether you think it's funny or not. I used to tell it to my students. <laughs> well, okay, so I can't do that anymore. I'm retired. But I'll go ahead and tell it to you. All right. So here's the joke. Why did I say that? Again, that was stupid. I should, you know, I should just go right into the material. I shouldn't preface it with, here's the joke. That's really kind of foolish. Well, here's the joke. The Pope decided to resign. Not Pope Benedict, any Pope, okay? There was no Pope Benedict back at the, at when, when Rob told me the story. It shocked everyone. All the Cardinals in the College of the Cardinals were totally shocked by this. Uh, they were unprepared for what might happen next. This was entirely new territory. No Pope before had ever resigned and but now all of a sudden this new pope said he was going to resign he said he said i don't really like it i've been in the job for a couple of days i want someone else to succeed me as pope so people people who make that black smoke started thinking oh my god now we have to make more black smoke well maybe so what the Pope said to all of his cardinals is he said, I want you to go to the four corners of the earth. Now, does the earth really have four corners? Isn't that like a, a layover from flat earth theory? I don't know, but it could be. It's certainly a question worth asking. Anyway, he said, go to the four corners of the earth and each one of you find me a candidate who might become the next pope. Okay, 
So they all agreed to that. Well, I don't think they could disagree since it was the their boss, the Pope, telling them this. But, okay, so uh, I'll just give you a few examples of what some of the characters that, that uh, these, these wonderful uh, cardinals brought back. One person brought back this guy uh, named uh, uh, Archbishop Thomas. Archbishop Thomas, an American guy, okay, comes in, kisses the ring of the Pope and sits down on the chair at the Pope's invitation. The Pope has decided in advance that he is going to test these candidates by asking them one simple question. And that question is, what is the meaning of Easter? Simple question, right? Well, simple for, you would think for an archbishop at least. So the Pope did that. He asked the question and the archbishop said, I know, I know, yeah, I know. I know what it is. I know what it is. That's when uh, that big fat guy with the long white beard, I guess kind of like this, maybe, I don't know, comes down the chimney and assuming he doesn't get stuck, he gets to the bottom and he puts gifts inside the stockings. And the Pope says, no, 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 no. That is Christmas, not Easter. Go, go, get out of here. Okay. Next candidate comes in. His name is uh, Archbishop Luigi. And uh, Pope says, Archbishop Luigi, can you tell me what is the meaning of Easter? And the guy says, oh, we, yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. That's when, like, all the fireworks go off and the people celebrate their independence, their independence from Britain. And the Pope says, no, 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 that's the 4th of July in the United States of America. Go, get out of here. I never want to see your face here again. By this time, and I'm I'm shortening the joke just for the sake of children who might be listening. The final candidate comes in. Um, his name is uh, Bishop Marco, Archbishop Marco from uh, from Spain. And uh, Arch P.S. He says, Archbishop Marco. Can you please tell me what is the meaning of Easter? Okay? And Archbishop Marco says, I know. I can tell you exactly what is the meaning of Easter. That's when the blessed Jesus is on the cross and he is a, he is a crying he is sobbing and blood is pouring down from his hands and he says to, to the Father if, if it be thy will take this cup away from me but let thy will not my will be done and obviously the Pope is exhilarated gee looks like we finally found one he says Good. Continue, continue, Archbishop. Okay. Jesus died. His disciples carried him ever so slowly, ever so slowly from the cross into the cave. They cried. So much they cried and they put a rock, a stone, in front of the cave to keep any people out who might want to steal his body. A few days later, three women, including Mary Magdalene, showed up and they saw that the stone, the rock, had been taken away from the cave 
and they yell out, it's a miracle, it's a miracle. They look in and they see the figure of a man walking toward the entrance to the cave. <gasps> they shout. Closer and closer this figure comes and they see, my goodness, it is the blessed Jesus. He is approaching the entrance to the cave. He doesn't see a shadow, goes back into the cave. Six more weeks of winter. Okay, that's the joke. All right, if you didn't, if you didn't get it, then there's something wrong with you. You had to get it. Come on, you 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 got it right. Look, I'm not going to tell you that it's Groundhog Day. Well, um, anyway. Thank you, thank you for the, that appreciation. Now, uh, let me uh, pause here for a second saying, I don't want any appreciation for my humor, such as it is. Please don't send me any money. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't care. There's, there's Patreon. There's, uh, there, there's, there's buy me a coffee that I see people using. And, and, and bless them. I hope that they get the money they need. Uh, many of these people that this is that's the only money that they have is what they get from their YouTube videos or it's almost only the only money they have or they use it maybe to buy money for their children to buy food for their children I'm sorry you can't buy money money isn't free um, but I don't need it I really don't I won't tell you why it's a secret so I won't tell you why but I don't need it. I really don't need it. <laughs> Make it very strong. I really, really don't need it. So don't don't send me money. I don't want to see anybody asking me about setting up a Patreon or buy me a coffee, buy me a coffee account. Okay? I don't want the money. I, I do not want your money. Take your money and spend it on something important. Buy yourself a nice dinner. Go to a nice restaurant. Go to a, go to a good McDonald's. Get a good Big Mac. Go to a good Burger King. Get a nice quarter pounder. Or maybe better. Okay. Anyway, I don't want your money. So please don't send it to me. And don't ask me if I plan to ask for money. Because I never will. I don't want it. I don't need it and I will not accept it. You send me the money and, and I will put take it and thrust it down the toilet bowl. Now, here's the topic for today. I am going to take Marxism or Maoism, third worldism and apply it to a special topic. Up till this point I've been talking about uh, Marxism or Maoism, third worldism in a very uh, generalized sense but I think that applying it to a specific case is uh, is an important thing too and I'll probably be doing that on many occasions when I was a first worldist which was like two minutes ago not literally but seemingly I was really really hostile toward as we say in the United States, progressivism, or as virtually every other country in the world says, social democracy, I hated it. I said, that, that, is a, that is an awful thing. What they are doing is they are substituting revolution for reform. Of course, that's the famous book by Rosa Luxemburg, Reform or Revolution. And of course, the answer is, in a sense, both. In a sense, both. Nothing wrong with reform, but ultimately you need revolution. That aside, the, the basic idea that most communists have is that we don't need reform. Reform is a distraction. Uh, we really need to be spending our time stirring up the masses, um, getting people prepared for a revolution to overthrow capitalism. That's what I believed. Well, that's what most communists believe. 
And I kind of believe it sort of still, but not exactly the same way as I once did. But now, as a Marxist, a.k.a. Maoist, third worldist, I now see it differently, somewhat. If there is no opportunity, really, to stage a revolution in the Western world or the global north or the first world right now, then what is the point of stirring up revolutionary fervor? Revolution is not going to start here. We are not going to have a revolution. Well, maybe we will, but not for a long time. But we're not ready for revolution. We haven't reached that point. Revolution will start and maybe end, not sure, in the third world. And that will be sometime after the first world has either been completely annihilated or at least disfigured so it can no longer interfere and meddle in the affairs of the third world. So my feeling now is, well, why not? Why not have some progressive programs. Why not encourage uh, the government to give more money to the poor? Uh, why not work on eliminating global warming? Why not uh, work on trying to uh, save the children living in, 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 in far-flung far areas of the world? And so on, and so on, and so on. Why not? Why not focus on those kinds of things? Because if there's nothing to do now here, we have to do something somewhere. Right? Get my point? Okay, that's my point. And that thing that we should do is something good, something useful. I mean, why live a life of total inactivity? No, no reason. So what I say is now, now, don't become a progressive. Don't become a social democrat, which are the same thing. Because that means that you think of reform as the beginning and the end, right? The goal becomes reform. You reform capitalism. You put a smiley face on capitalism. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a temporary a temporary affair with social democracy and progressivism a temporary affair meaning making some changes helping people where we can protesting against all the oil drilling which is taking place for example on many Native American reservations here in the United States uh, protesting against the oppression of women, the discrimination uh, against against various minorities, uh, the attempt to establish the new Jim Crow laws here in the United States, all of those things, why not? Because there's nothing else to do. We're not ready for revolution. So that is the main thing that I wanted to discuss today. In fact, it is the only thing well, aside from the joke, that I want to, do, to discuss today. And so for now, this is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D., signing off.